people, what's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and we are finally here with week eight of the Lithio Battle Association. We are up against the Cincinnati Sylveons, of course, coached by Shiny Sophion or Bailey. I will leave her information in the description. And of course, thank you to Skyrander for the wonderfully crispy, nice quality. Ah, it looks so good. And the quality is fitting for how excellent of a battle this was. Now, um, my co-coach and I came up with uh, some interesting sets for this battle. I decided to go with Scarf Cobalion and Scarf Mamoswine. Of course, Scarf Cobalion outspeeds all of her possible Scarf options, such as Landorus. Uh, she also could have brought uh, Scarf Heatran or something like that. And the only thing that um, Cobalion couldn't really handle was something like Mega Ampharos. So for that, we had um, Scarf Mamoswine because Mamoswine really wasn't doing much as far as trying to run a bulky set um, but the the ground ice typing was really really good against their team I have a really weird mixed Dragonite um, this is the same rash one but I have fire blast and surf in order to hit things like Ferrothorn and the Dawn fan extreme speed uh, and then uh, of course we're just gonna have the um, Drake, I think I had Draco Meteor in the last slot. Um, we also had Silk Scarf Porygon Z just because she didn't really have anything to switch in on it and that bluff specs really, really well. If I could set up Agility Substitute or Nasty Plot, that would allow Porygon to do some serious damage. Standard Dragon Dance for Alligator just because that's a solid win condition against her team. Uh, she didn't really have anything to switch in on for Alligator as long as I carried the right coverage, so I went with uh, the... I think for this battle, I actually had Waterfall, Ice Punch, um, and Crunch, I believe, just to hit the, the Starmie. Um, and of course, that allows me to hit Suicune too. Now, with Whimsicott, I went with a little bit of an odd set. I just went with Memento, Encore, Moonblast, and Stun Spore. I wanted to create openings and opportunities in order for my other Pokemon to set up. So in the beginning here, I... Um, I just start off with Cobalion and go for. I'm sorry, this is not Scarf Cobalion. This is a this is an adamant bulky one, but she actually has a really interesting Snorlax set. I based on the damage there, I knew it wasn't banded. I went with Sacred Sword on Cobalion and expected Curse Lax. I barely knock her into the range for her Custap Berry, um, going for that Sacred Sword. But I do get my rocks up, which is pretty nice. I decided from this point to go into Mamoswine because I knew I could threaten with Earthquake, but she has Custap gluttony self-destruct so her snorlax is going to blow up and ko one of the biggest threats to her entire team which was my mammal swine uh that sucks that really really sucks so um she played that fantastically we're gonna go out into whimsicott here because i figured she'd probably go out into her verizon or maybe she'd go out into the landorus if it were scarfed um, I am worried that she might have some type of weird coverage to hit Whimsicott, so I go out into Dragonite here just to see what she's going to do. And she is going to switch out into Heatran, she's going to do it now, so this is perfect. But I over predict this turn, I definitely didn't see her staying in because the Earthquake was so obvious. So I just went for Outrage, this is a Bandit Outrage. And um, I think I got the wrong sets at the beginning of this battle. But um, that sucks, because now I'm stuck in here using Outrage. She made a huge risk staying in there, and it definitely paid off very, very well for her. I could have just gone for Earthquake and ended Heatran. But now I have a Burn Banded Dragonite going for Outrage, and she gets to set up her rocks for free, which also sucks. Fortunately, I only get the two-turn Outrage, which is really, really nice, because that means now I can switch out of here. I also could have just stayed in and kept going for Outrage, because Dragonite is a little bit neutered at this point as far as his usefulness. I decide to keep Dragonite around just because I can bring in Whimsicott here, expecting her to switch out uh, to try to take advantage of the fact that I am locked into Outrage. And she actually goes out into her Suicune, so this is perfect. I, I was playing a little bit aggressive right there. And this is most likely Crocoon. If it isn't, then great. I actually don't have Giga Drain on my Whimsicott just because uh, I figured I could threaten it pretty pretty heartily there I have uh, energy ball on Wimsicott um, but we're gonna go directly out into Porygon here to see if she has ice beam and she does have it Porygon doesn't mind that too badly error 404 did fantastically in the last battle where he managed to live that Garchomp attack so he's gonna play a role here too 
but I am going to go straight for Tri Attack. I know if she comes in with Heatran, uh, I can two hit KO it, but I do get a critical hit, which KOs it in a single hit. And the crit didn't really matter because I could have just outsped it and went for another Tri Attack, but it did make her think that I was Specs, which will come into play later on. Um, so the crit mattered as far as her mentality and how she's going to deal with Porygon. Now, right here, I figured she'd just go for close combat with her Verizon, and that's fine by me. I can go out into my Dawn fan. Uh, wow, I can go out into my Dragonite and take any hit, hopefully, live after the burn, and then threaten with an extreme speed or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, if she decides to switch out into Landorus here, that means it's gonna neuter my extreme speed. But she actually goes out into Starmie, which is perfect because I'm gonna do a pretty good chunk of damage, and I'm also gonna go down to the burn afterwards which um, stops her from spinning away my rocks. So the going down to the burn there was actually pretty important because now I can go out into Whimsicott and I can threaten her out. Uh, hopefully, right here I really just figured, eh, let's just go straight for Stun Spore. She wants to stay in, she'll get paralyzed. If she switches out, I can get a nice paralysis on something else. But um, we're gonna go for Moon Blast here just in case she did stay in, I can get a good amount of damage off. Seeing the damage on Landorus makes me think that it's more offensive, so I, now I'm going to go for the Stun Spore, but unfortunately I miss it as she goes for U-Turn. Ugh. That was a really important Stun Spore to hit. I don't think it actually ended up mattering, but it forced me to play differently because Landorus was not paralyzed. Uh, since she did switch it out right there, though, I was thinking, okay, maybe she's Scarfed. I'm not really sure. Uh, with uh, the Suicune back in, now we kind of need to just see what it's going to go for. I switched out last time, so I'm just going to go straight for Moonblast, hoping for the special attack drop. I don't get it, but Ice Beam also doesn't quite KO me, which is pretty nice, because now I can either Encore or Memento. I was afraid she'd switch out, but I decided to go straight for Encore, because now that means it'll force her out if I bring in Feraligator after she KOs me. So Encore forces her to KO me. So Whimsicott did a good job. I would have loved to have Landorus paralyzed at this point, especially if it happened to be Scarfed, but that's okay. Now I can go into Feraligator and click Dragon Dance. Granted, she still has the Landorus left, which of course Intimidate will negate the plus one I get from my Dragon Dance. But hey, she's actually going to go on to Verizon first there, probably is expecting me to go for uh, Swords Dance since she went on to Verizon. But since I have Dragon Dance, now I can outspeed it. I do know from earlier that she is. Uh, life orb, so she's not scarfed, so there's no way she can be outspeeding me. Ice Punch is going to take out Verizon, and now we're going to go on a little bit of a tear here because she's going to go on into Landorus, and I know um, unless it's like Bandit Explosion, it can't KO me. So we're going to go for another Dragon Dance in order to be able to pressure Suicune a little bit more uh, with plus one crunches. Uh, now I, of course, she outsped me with the Earthquake right there. So now I know I'm going to be faster than she is, and I'm going to KO her with the Waterfall. Now I guess the, if she were paralyzed right there, that would have been nice, because then I could have had a chance at more Dragon Dances, but that's okay. Right here, we're just going to go straight for Crunch. Um, I know it's not going to do very much if she's max defense, and I'm just praying I don't get burned. Please, I don't get burned. Glorious, glorious non-burn goodness. You don't want to burn your toast. You don't want to burn your food. I don't want my Feraligator burn either. Uh, so that means I'm going to put Suicune in a critical KO range where I can easily KO with from this range with my Porygon. And then furthermore, uh, she really has to make a decision here because she was thinking that I was Specs, which is pretty important. But if I were Specs, that means I lost because that means her Starmie outspeeds me. Since I'm not Specs, I can come in here, go for Agility with Porygon, and we're at this point, we're just hoping to not get burned. I was figuring maybe she'll go for a rest, but if she goes for a rest, then I can also set up Interface with Nasty Plot. Uh, but I don't get burned, which is nice from the Scald. And so now that I take out the Suicune, all that is left is the Starbee, which cannot take a uh, Adaptability Silk Scarf modest try attack from this range at all even if she is bulky, which she might have been. I get a crit, definitely don't think it mattered at the end there. Uh, and that means we're gonna win this battle 1-0. Very, very, very slight margin of victory there. But uh, I am happy that we actually ended up waiting to do our battle. We were gonna do it on, I think, Wednesday. But she had a lot of stuff going on, and so did I. And we were both tired, so we delayed it. Ended up being totally worth it. So thank you very much, uh, Shiny Sophion, for the excellent battle. 
and the eternity enters are going to keep on rolling trying to get into that positive differential eventually here but a victory is a victory so we will definitely take it and we'll look forward to the next batch up against um i think it's esquilo with the uh duncan typhlosion is the next battle so look forward to that and have a great day guys bye now